You know, if you have been paying attention to the flight simulator market in the past few years, you'd be surprised at how advanced, versatile, and configurable new flight simulators have become. That's why it's no surprise that the FAA has changed its regulations on how pilots can log instrument time in a flight sim. It's also no surprise that flight schools are using simulators now more than ever. Now before we go to a growing flight school here in Eastern Connecticut to see how they're using a new flight sim, let's take a look at those FAA regulations on how you can log instrument time. The FAA's most recent regulatory update for simulator flight experience credit says that pilots can use an aviation training device, or an ATD, to meet recent experience requirements for filing and flying IFR. That's governed by FAR 6157 subpart C, just as they would a full flight simulator, an FSS, or a flight training device, an FTD. These are more sophisticated and expensive flight sims compared to ATDs, like this Fly This Sim Touch Trainer. And that means you don't have to try to find a safety pilot to ride along with you while you work on the procedures and approaches in the airplane. And once you're current, technically you're good for 60 days, just as if you've done it in the airplane. Now the benefits are pretty obvious. You're not burning fuel and you could probably bang out more approaches in lesser time than it would take you to do it in the airplane. Now there is one caveat, and it's related to some record keeping. You'll need to make a logbook entry or keep some sort of training log that specifies the type of ATD that you used and the time you spent in it and what you did in it, number and type of approaches, that kind of thing. Now the FAA issues letters of authorization to approve ATDs and it recommends that you make a copy of that letter for the ATD that you use and keep it with your records. Now let's go see one of these new flight simulators in action over at Learn to Fly Connecticut. They're at Wyndham Airport in Eastern Connecticut. Here's Phil Smith. So as a new flight school, as we're getting new aircraft here, high wing, low wing, uh, multiple uh, different types of aircraft for different variants of training for the pilots and student pilots in the region here in uh, Eastern Connecticut, uh, we decided to go with a basic advanced training device, a BATD. Uh, which allows us to do a multitude of, of training uh, that otherwise you'd have to do in the aircraft. Um, we decided to go with Fly This Sim. Uh, it's a very immersive uh, type of uh, flight simulator. It allows us to do basic VFR maneuvers uh, for private pilot students all the way to instrument currency. Uh, the only thing we can't do with this type of training device is the circle to land requirement for instrument. Um, but one of the big things with this uh, touch this trainer or to fly this sim is that uh, we use X-Plane 10. Uh, so it's very user friendly. I've used other simulators throughout my uh, teaching career uh, as a flight instructor here in Connecticut and some of them can be a little finicky, uh, a little difficult to use, not really user friendly. Uh, fly this sim has become very, has shown to me to be very user friendly and it's very simple. It's all touch screen with the exception of the three television screens. So our Fly This Sim flight simulator, our basic advanced training device, has very realistic flight controls. We have a standard yoke like you might find in a Cessna uh, 172, 152. Uh, we have a throttle quadrant, mixture quadrant, and prop quadrant, as well as rudder pedals on the floor. Uh, so it makes it for a very realistic training environment. Well, what we're seeing here with the Fly This Sim loaded up is the actual environment of being at the Wyndham Airport at India Juliet Delta. It allows for the students to really get a real feeling for being at the airport, but on a virtual si uh, scale. Um, so they, it takes less to kind of transition from flying in a virtual world to the real world in an actual aircraft. So it really uh, helps the students in their training environment uh, get even more proficient in all the maneuvers and landing an aircraft or doing an instrument approach procedure and picking up a clearance while standing on the ground at the actual airport itself. Alright, so if you haven't flown in a few weeks or a few months or perhaps a, a year or so, maybe you've fallen out of uh, currency and uh, just general aviation in general, uh, something like this can really benefit you. Instead of purchasing something like this for your house, a lot of people don't have the funds available to purchase something like this where a business like a flight school does. Uh, you can always come down to your local airport and do a little flight training with an instructor uh, when it comes to possibly a, a future flight that you might be thinking about performing or uh, flight planning for, but you're unfamiliar. Uh, here we just landed at Fort Lauderdale, uh, Foxtrot Lima Lima. I've personally never flown down there. 
but we just successfully shot an approach into 10, I believe it was the RNAV 10 right approach. Um, never would have been able to do that without this type of simulator unless we were doing it in real world. So it provides a huge benefit to pilots, student pilots, uh, private pilots, commercial, commercially rated pilots, everything. Uh, it's a huge benefit to the general aviation community. So one of the big uh, problems in the community, in the general aviation community in the last few years, uh, in the last years in general, uh, has been the transitioning between the steam gauges to the new avionics out there on the market today. Uh, this simulator, this Fly the Sim simulator, allows us to load up different dashboards of aircraft, anything from a, a steam gauges to a dual Garmin 430 units, uh, a 530, a 430. Uh, we can load up Aspen units, we can load up a G500 or G1000. So it allows for people to really get some good transitional training going from a typical steam gauge uh, avionics suit to the more advanced avionics that are on the market today. All right, so it doesn't even have to be just a new avionics upgrade, it could be an aircraft. So our Fly This Sim simulator here, we can simulate anything Cessna related regarding a Cessna 172, a Cessna 182. So if a pilot's transitioning from a Cessna 172 and they want to get checked out on a 182, they can spend some time on the simulator here prior to ever stepping foot in the actual aircraft with an instructor. Uh, we can simulate even all the way up to a, a Cessna 206 with a full G1000 layout. Uh, so for that person that's looking to transition or get additional training, uh, they can come to a simulator or a flight school like ours and get additional training prior to ever stepping foot in the real plane. All right, so the other thing we can do with Fly This Sim is we can load up ForeFlight or any electronic flight bag such as Garmin Pilot, ForeFlight, anything like that, and we can actually connect the, the two interfaces together so that the little blue dot actually shows up in relation to where the simulator is actually flying. Uh, just improves situational awareness immensely when it comes to training, just like you would in the real world in the actual aircraft. All right, so here at Learn to Fly Connecticut, for our Fly This Sim flight simulator, our basic advanced training device, we are charging only an hourly rate of $35 an hour for the actual simulator. And the sole purpose of that is because we want people to use the simulator. We want people to stay proficient with flight training. We don't want just people getting the $100 burger once a month or once every other month, uh, which seems to lead to a lack of proficiency and currency in the aircraft. Um, it, Typical for an actual hourly rate for an aircraft, you're looking at probably $130, $139 per hour for an actual 172. Um, so $35 an hour compared to $139 an hour plus an instructor, there's a, a large cost savings when it comes to training on a, a flight simulator. Now, if you're thinking it'd be pretty trick to have one of these simulators in your home or office, the Fly This Sim Touch Trainer VM shown in this video is priced just north of $15,000 as equipped, but the company does have entry-level models that start at about $5,000. Now, you can read a full report on flight simulators, including the new ATDs, in a future issue of Aviation Safety magazine. Reporting for Aviation Safety, I'm Larry Anglesano. Thanks for watching.